All right, we have all the materials together. I love any eyes shift clicks so much right now. I would never get those runes in the right order. And of course, I start recording as soon as the sun is coming down. But we have our agglomeration plate. And between cuts, I had to grind up quite a lot of mana, and I'm going to have to grind up quite a lot more after this. And while that was going on, I decided to add some Nether Quartz to my weapons. Nether Quartz is, of course, the modifier that allows uh, increased damage. I believe these throwing knives were plus 7 before, and this was like plus 8 or 9. So yeah, you get quite a lot more punch out of them. Now... To use the agglomeration plate, you have to assemble some living wood and some lapis blocks in a pattern like this, and put it in the center. But it still needs a method for getting mana into that. And for that, we are going to need sparks. Sparks are kind of the big bulk mana pipe. So that was made out of four of those. Uh, where are those? And two of those. They can transfer mana between pools, between mana pools, or to some big devices like the Terra Steel production, but they cannot transfer, to instance, to these runic altars. You still need old spreaders for that, and they can't draw out of generator flowers. So they're kind of like mana relays. You just put one over the pool here, and one over the plate here, and then to make terra steel we are going to need one mana pearl, one mana diamond, and one mana steel. Just cook all those up really quickly. And I believe that if you right-click them onto the plate, instead of just throwing them on, they kind of get sucked down in, and you don't even need solignolias, they just don't get drawn in by the magnet. It might happen if you just throw them on there too, but meh. Not gonna risk it, because if you pick them all up, you lose all the mana that you are using in this process. And this is a very thirsty process. It costs about a half of a mana pool to make a single piece of Terra Steel. It is, uh, it's quite a thing. It's very pretty, though. It's bright green and glowy and very nice and naturey. It's used for a lot of advanced devices. The, uh, advanced tier armor, which I believe gives diamond level resistance. It um, has the same the same mana repair thing as the mana steel armor. Gives knockback resistance and it gives lots of bonuses and stuff like that. Uh, okay, it's used for a bunch of weapons. I'm looking for, oh, of course it would be, yeah, here it is. Mining level steel. I'm not sure if that's as good as alumite or not. Either way, this stuff gives tons of durability. And actually, hold on again. I'm sorry, I'm just curious. Uh, attack 1.5 hearts and alumite is... Ingot. Attack two hearts. Okay, it's not as good for weapons. But, most prominently, I believe we are actually going to need to break this into nuggets for this, we can use it to create some things for an elven portal. We saw that the first bit is this elven portal core, and I believe the other six nuggets will go into making these two Natura pylons which we need to open the portal to Alfheim. The portal to Alfheim is a great big structure. 
which let me show you something really cool that Batania does. If I click Visualize here, then I can just go over, let's put it here, and it stays there. And I can, I guess it's a little bit buggy with the uh, book binder, or maybe it's just that render error that I've been having. But yeah, as you can see, it needs these two mana, these two mana pools, those two Natura pylons. It needs a bunch of regular living wood. It needs the gateway core itself, and it needs some of that glimmering living wood, which I believe is just uh, living wood plus glowstone. Yes. So let's get that constructed. Let's just do this kind of messily. Put these over here. Okay. Need to get over there. Okay, that's the portal itself constructed with a couple extras. It needs the two mana pools. Interesting that I didn't have the achievement for that ready the first time I made one of those. And it needs those two Natura pylons, which are going to need some regular old uh, mana pylons. Yeah, that's a mana diamond and some mana steel, so get myself two diamonds, get myself four steel, and I believe it was also four gold. Okay, let's just walk through that again. Yep, there's those. And then I need two of those. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, and that should make the multi-block complete. Yes, it gives you a little confirmation. Structure complete. However, I cannot kick this thing on just yet because it requires, again, a tremendous amount of mana to turn this thing on. I think each of these pools needs to be about a third full. And I can... I don't have to necessarily put it over here in spreaders. You see this icon here, how it says uh, tablet the pool. If you sneak click, it reverses that. So if I throw my tablet down... The tablet holds about a half a pool's worth of mana. Empty that about halfway out. Yeah, I can fill this thing up with the tablet, but I don't believe this tablet is going to hold enough. And in any case, I would like more of a security buffer so that this thing stays on for a couple of minutes once I do turn it on, because I'm going to need time to put materials through it. So I am going off camera again to grind some more mana. Just in case you were wondering, it takes it a good two or three minutes to chew through a, uh, a block of coal with these endo flames, and ten blocks of coal generates that much mana. And I'm probably going to need like a pool and a half full to get like as much as I want. Oh boy. Let's do a little bit of science. I've got 10 coal blocks worth of mana in here. Let's see how much mana steel it makes. 40. So, uh, we have a conversion rate of about one coal block equal equaling four mana steel. Actually, it looks like it's an, it's an exact conversion rate. That's good to know. While grinding mana, I was just doing a little maintenance on the base, and I noticed that we are almost full up on creosote oil. 
And like I said, when this thing fills up, it stops producing coke. And that would just... We, we, want, we want more coke. So I decided to try out these railcraft tanks. These things are mostly... Oops. They're mostly built out of these iron plates you saw in the rolling machine. There's some added materials for them, like uh, glass panes and uh, levers and iron bars to make the valves that are the input and output of them. And I have just a pipe underground that will pull the creosote out of the cook oven and put it, hopefully, into this tank. Hello. You have a valve. Okay, that's something I was worried about, because I think that bottom valves can only be used for output. So, that's no big deal. We just need to put a valve there. Yes, that reformed. It did. Well, no, I don't want you to input in back into the coke furnace. What would be the point of that? So let me get something else to help me out. I believe I have some of these in miscellany. Yes. Pipe plugs, which are made from these cobblestone, these uh, support pipes, which are just made from cobble and gravel. You take one of those and craft it in, you get these pipe plugs. They can be used to prevent a connection, like so. And there we are, and you see it's very pretty in there. And this thing will hold almost 600 buckets of creosote oil as versus the uh, 64 that the coke oven itself could hold, so this will take a good long while to fill up. And this is a relatively small tank. These things can be built huge. And this is just a basic tank made of iron. If I wanted to spend a whole ton of steel, then I could make one that holds even more! We're talking like millions upon millions of buckets. So yeah, there is that. That was actually, I believe, a quest. Ah, I don't have enough tanks yet, but I thought I would show that off. Actually, I just noticed something about these things that's useful. It has an interface for a bucket that can fill and empty them. That is a very intriguing prospect because I know from experimenting with Ender IO tanks that that has lots of uses. For one thing, I could use it to keep these vats stocked a whole lot easier. Oh yes, also, just quick aside, put a lever on a crucible furnace and give it a signal and it will not suck in fuel automatically. I haven't used this thing in freaking forever, so yeah. Anyway, yeah, I'm thinking if I have an auto assembler doing this lava bucket recipe on the back and I keep it stocked with buckets, then I could pipe out lava buckets into a tank and it will empty them out and fill up the tank. And then I can uh, just use that tank to keep the vats supplied with lava. So let's build that together. Is the mana still happening? Yes. Okay. I don't think I'm going to build a very large tank for this. I mean, you saw just the size that it has already is enough to give us hundreds upon hundreds of buckets. Now, what does auto assembler cost? It's automated steam trap. Is it hyphen? No. And it costs two pistons, a crafting table, and some iron. Okay, so we're going to need a total of six iron. Um, 
And that's it from that. Let's see, we're going to need two of those. We're going to need a bunch of wood. Uh, we're out of cobble. Yeah. I realize that I shouldn't turn off the camera when I have an idea. Even if I just end up derping around forever and it goes nowhere, I can just, you know, cut that out later. And things like this are kind of where a lot of the Let's Play comes from, so I thought I would just do this with all y'all. And I forgot to make these beforehand. Okay. Two pistons. And let's just do all this. We need some slabs to make crafting tables. Still weirds me out crafting them like this. Oh, I only needed one, excuse me. Okay, so that's that. 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 And that. Alright, and let me get some more iron. Let's give it three... Let's just give it one bucket. That will be less potential for disaster. Okay, and of course, if I put this thing right here and I grab myself some fire essence and do that and do that, then it will do that. And I need to set it to always on. And I think I actually do need to give it a bucket just to hold on to, yes. Then that will fill up. And I can use an emerald pipe to filter out lava buckets. And I need just my walking around bucket. Always keep a bucket on hand. Eternally useful tool. And it is getting to be night. Come on, game. Come on, game. There we go. That was weird. That is a new one. And let's just do our chores real quick. Put the spare coal away, and let's get back to work. Okay, I'm probably going to need some liquid pipes. And that should do for now. So, let's take this lava bucket here. And I believe I can make this system mostly hidden back here. Yeah, it's even shielded kind of from our maintenance tunnel just because it'll be completely its own thing. Okay, so let's make the base of the tank like that. And actually, let's make an output at the bottom. And I don't I don't even know why I brought gauges with me. I don't need them. And I don't think I need a valve just to put buckets in. I should make it a little bit more distant than that, just so that I have room to work while I do routing. And maybe I'll make the tank a little bit bigger too. Actually, let's do it one block more, just to be sure. Let's put a nook right there. 
Yeah, there we are. We're just under one of the paths, so that's pretty good distance. Okay. Center. Output valve. And I think I'm going to need more tank walls. Yes, I am. Thankfully, those are pretty easy. It's just, don't even need a crafting bench. Yes, I know I made far too many, but I have a feeling they're always going to be useful. Uh. There we go. Formed. Hold 600 buckets, just like our creosote tank. Okay, so let's do extract whitelist filter to lava bucket. And let's do down here. Extract. No? Okay, do I need a valve? Hmm. I can't extract items from this. At least not with Buildcraft. Hmm. Let's just try it. If I put a bucket in, maybe it needs to be like a specific, maybe if I put a valve here, will it? No. Damn. <laughs> but you can see what I was thinking though. We would pipe out lava buckets from here they would go into here and empty out. We would then have the other emerald transport pipe filter just to empty buckets. It would extract the empty bucket and pipe it back into here. And so then all I would have to do is occasionally dump a load of fire essence into here, and it would keep that tank stocked. But sadly, it appears it is not to be. Well, that is, I guess, just a little insight into the things that I do when I am bored. They don't always work. Okay. The majority of that wasn't actually filling up these mana pools here. That, that was done after one or more two loads of coal. The majority of it was getting all of this. So, I prettied up the portal altar. Let's take our wand and turn this thing on. Actually, first, let's see. Yeah, that pool is almost exactly half full. Half full. That one's a little bit low. Let's see how much it costs to kick it on. Okay, it's all the way on. Oh, that costs less than I remember. I overcomplicated that part of it. Still, it would have taken about the same amount of time to get all these materials. So, when you first open the portal, the first thing you want to do is take your Lexica Batania and chuck that through. Uh, this portal doesn't accept players. There is no Alfheim dimension, thankfully. I don't want to deal with elves. But it does accept items, and it gets instantly thrown back and instantly sucked into my bookbinder. And we get this very pretty introduction that has tons of lore that I'm not going to read because I would be compelled to do the elf voice. But yes, now there are tons of new flower recipes. There's new... Everything you see in green is things that we wouldn't have in the Lexica before. There's tons of new things we can do. We can make augmentations to control our sparks. And like I said, use them to transfer mana between uh, pools. 
And more importantly, if we chuck certain items through the portal, we get something in exchange from the elves. It's much easier than building a depot. So I got myself a bunch of diamonds to make a bunch of dragonstone, which is what we actually needed this whole time. I got myself a bunch of mana pearls, and I got myself a bunch of mana steel, which I believe they only exchange at 2 to 1. And yeah, that is all you need from them. Do I have much mana in here? Eh. Let's see here. I know I made a ton of glass. Do I have enough mana to make enough mana glass to make enough elf glass to be worth it? Wow, mana glass is cheap. Elf glass! This stuff makes those really cool potion bottles I told you about. If I do these, I get three uh, flasks. And these, I believe, will uh, make... Yeah, see that six next to it? That means it has six uses. So that is very nice. I got some more Terra Steel from doing a uh, from doing the quest. That's under teaches no. That's under how the way in the world do. Yes. So I need to make an enchantment table to do that mana pylon quest, but I got the Terra Steel from that quest. And uh, yeah, now that I have those dragon stones, I can make those fancy purple attuned stones with a whiff of magic and a bucket of lava. And with that, I can make the distillery and a bunch of other stuffs. So let's once again get it back to daytime. And you know, I think actually, because uh, as long as this portal's on, it will very slowly chew through these mana pools, much more slowly than uh, the initial activation cost. That's just a burst. But I don't think I'm going to be using it very often, so let's just turn it off. So yeah, maybe I slightly over-prepared for that. But oh well, we now have a ton of very cool advanced mana things. And that Elementium can make hot pink armor that is slightly better than our cool ranch armor. And, oh yes, I'm getting some whiffs of magic to make some dragon stones. Let's make eight. Okay, and we get our dragon stones. And let's put the elf glass away. Put the glass glass away. Okay. Yep. That's bad. Nothing caught on fire. It's all good. One, two. I need to stop doing that. Hmm, didn't even fall this time. That's better. Okay, bunch of attuned stones. These things have a bunch of uses. They are kind of the uh, one of the locks. They can be used to make a kettle, which is kind of witchery's spell and potion brewing system. You can make a chalice, which is one of the altar items. A uh, spinning wheel is something that we'll need to make enchanted clothing and various other sundries. And they can make this distillery. So I'm gonna need five iron and two gold. Huh. 
<sighs> and I'm going to need some empty clay jars. Oh, that's just the netherrack. Oh yes, also I made a little underground pump and just a pipe, so this cauldron is remaining full. And eventually that'll be used for the kettle tool. Let's just do that. Yep. So let's put the distillery right here. And yeah, that just requires... That's going to be using these clay jars. And that is going to be using fuel, which I do not have here. Is it going to be using fuel? Actually, I don't think it uses fuel. Okay. Now, I wanted that distillery in order to make a thing for a trephid seed. I've been doing so many other things, I forgot what I was actually doing in the first place. So that needs, yeah, and I need it for these Tears of the Goddess, which is Breath of the Goddess plus Lapis. Do I have Breath of the Goddess? Yes, I do. So let's get three of those, and let's get three Lapis. And wait, I had some loose Lapis. So, as you can see, the distillery takes a, uh, a fume, and it takes a reagent, and it kind of uh, refines it. Yep, there it goes. It is bubbling and troubling, and I believe that it requires a very small amount of altar power constantly. I forgot to turn off my notifications again. I turned them on while I was just grinding, and then uh, I forgot to turn them off before I recorded again. Uh, yes, hello, swearing engine guy. Yes, uh, uh. <clears throat> professional. But yeah, I think we have so much altar power coming in that uh, unless it charges, unless it makes. Uh, no, it must have ticked over by now, and it looks like it didn't. So yeah, we just have so much altar power coming in that. A single distillery makes no difference. So we got some more with a magic, some foul fumes, a slime ball, and this tier of the goddess. So we want a reek of misfortune, which I don't think I have. What's that made from? It's just from alders. Okay. I should should have been smelting alders. I guess I didn't have enough of them. Yeah, I think their saplings are relatively rare drops. Oh, well, I have... I should have one growing over there. Let's... Hey, why not? On-screen ent danger. We know it's not that dangerous. Let's just cycle the trees. There's the alder. I didn't hear a no. No ant danger? Come on, I wanted to test out my new weapon upgrades on you. Oh well. So let's... Yeah, let's plant this alder that we just got dropped, just to make sure. Let's plant a hawthorn there. Plant a rowan. Can I get another alder, please? I think this is why I hadn't dis why I hadn't uh, burned any of these because I think these saplings have a lower drop rate, or at least alders seem to have less leaves. Yeah, hawthorns can grow frickin' huge, but uh, these eh? oh. Aren't you an overachiever? Oh well, let's just plant that last sapling and leave it alone. We have another alder growing. It will work. 
And if not, there's always Mutandus, which I can make much more easily now. Spare a bit of Rowan wood. Eh, I don't think I have slime seeds yet, so let's not trash it just yet. Reeks of Misfortune. Maybe it should bathe. Okay, Trifid Seed. Uh, that's for Mutantis Extremis and Ember Root, and... I have all my Ember stuff downstairs. Now, fortunately, as you saw, I have that field of it still stocked and growing. And it gives me an excuse to run through here and... Actually, you know, since Alder is now very rare, let's get rid of that Hawthorne and, yeah. Okay. So, just leave one Ember behind. Let's also do the Glimmer Weed. I have Buku Spanish Moss, so I... How did you get out? You earned your freedom. But yeah, I, I don't need any more Spanish moss at the moment. Okay. So I only needed one of those. I needed four of the Mutendus Extremis. I needed a Water Artichoke Globe and a Mandrake. And I think that was everything. Treefid! Okay, so for that I just need one of each of these saplings and some essence. Okay. Was it three? Mm, yeah, it was three. I should get some more mana in there. Okay, I will BRB. <sighs> so... I think you can see why I wanted to put off this little part of Batania until I had some means of automatically producing mana. <sighs> well, good news is I think that this is finally, finally, for real, the last part of Thumbcraft we need to actually get into it. And I don't think that can be sped up with bone meal. I don't have any on me. And nope. It needs a ha it needs a thumbcraft thing called the hoe of growth to speed it up. I could bring in sprinklers, but meh. I'll just wait until the next episode, next time, where we will have that great wood all grown and strong, and we'll cut it down, and we'll make all the Thomcraft. <sighs> now, it's about time. I'll see you then, everybody.